He posted this on February 8th. Uh, can any Calvinists tell me why Adam sinned? Previous conversations didn't yield much answers. If Adam chose to disobey God, then that seems to contradict Calvinism's view of God's sovereignty. But if God caused Adam to disobey him, then that seems to make God the author of sin. Now, this is a, a, a fairly standard question, but it's not a standard question just for the Reformed. Um, medieval theologians had dealt with these issues. Um, all, Augustine dealt with these issues. All sorts of people have dealt with these issues. This is a basic theistic question as to the origin of evil. But certainly, um, with all due respect to Trent Horn, this is, this is one of the things that I sense is different between the current Catholic Answers guys and the Catholic Answers guys that I dealt with back when Catholic Answers was you know, that big. Um, and that is, okay, Patrick Madrid, sort of, I think, a cradle Catholic, so he was different. But a lot of the big names for a while there, Scott Hahn, Jerry Matitix, Robertson Jenis, what was their background? They are reformed. Had been, well, some genesis have been a lot of things, but, um, I mean, Jerry Matitix was the, the first ordained PCA minister to ever leave Roman Catholicism and join, or leave the denomination, become a Roman Catholic. And Han's still very popular, and there are a lot of Catholics that wonder about some of his covenantal stuff, but he's managed to keep a pretty decent following. Jerry, of course, is who knows where Jerry is. Uh, last time I saw Jerry was on Jeopardy. <laughs> so that's that's a, anyway. Um, but they understood the background of the subject in a way that Trent clearly doesn't. And so the whole idea of primary and secondary causes, the idea of God's sovereign decree, compatibility. Genesis 50, Isaiah 10, Acts 4, um, doesn't seem to be a part of, you know, I, I don't get the feeling. I mean, he did in the follow-up tweet, quote one, he quoted from Paul Helm. Um, and I'm sure Paul Helm went into all of this, but you can never tell anymore on the net when someone quotes from somebody, whether they actually had the source or they're quoting from a quotation of the source. So you, you don't know. But the whole discussion of, of compatibility, I don't know about you. I have tried it on Twitter. That may be the very definition of purgatory. Um, because I, I, I just, if there's, there are lots of topics that were never designed to actually be discussed in any meaningful fashion on Twitter. Twitter can get the conversation going, but then it, it's just got to move to some place where you can string, you know, 10 sentences together in one context to make anything meaningful take place. Um, but I'm not sure what he means by previous conversations didn't yield much answers. Normally, when people say, say something like that, what they're saying is, well, I just don't accept the categories that are required to, to understand the answer. The categories would be the sovereign decree of God and the responsibility of man. So if you can look at Genesis 50 and see that God used the sin of Joseph's brothers and that it wasn't just, oh, this is how I'll do it, or oh, this is how I'll do it, that there was... One intention on God's part, good, on the brother's part, evil, same action. It's a sinful action. If you, if you don't have those categories to be able to see that in Genesis 50, Isaiah 10, use of the Assyrians, then punishes the Assyrians after he uses the Assyrians because of the attitude they had, same issue, one event, God's purposes and intentions, good. Man's are evil. God's just to punish the evil. 
And then, of course, Acts 4. Crucifixion of Jesus, predestined by God. And yet, everybody involved, Pilate, Jews, Romans, Herod, all held accountable. It, it's, it's simply allowing the, the fact that the Bible addresses these things in that way. Um, and so I just wonder if the, the statement that, you know, if Adam chose to disobey God, every Reformed person says, Adam chose to disobey God. But that doesn't mean that that choice was autonomous. The assumption is, for a choice to be a choice, it has to be an autonomous choice. But again, Pilate's choice to condemn Jesus, it wasn't that he wanted to do something nice and God forced him to do something bad. Even in the case of the brothers of Joseph, they wanted to kill him. God restrained him. It's not like they were just all these all wonderfully godly boys that God said, I'm going to make you do something terrible. No. So it's, my, my, my gut feeling is, given the way it's placed here, is that this, it's a false dichotomy between Adam choosing and God causing Adam to disobey him. Can't see that in one event, both are, re both are real. That there is a real choice based upon... Now, with Adam, you can't even... With everybody after this, we are given enough biblical revelation to have an understanding of what the source of that is in the fallen nature. With Adam, you don't have that. And anybody who tries, I've told you before, Jonathan Edwards tried to figure this out, and he ended up spinning in a tight circle. This book does not intend to answer that question. There's two chapters, and that's not addressed. And everything else in this book addresses where we are now. So that's, you know, if you want to sit here and go, well... I'm not going to believe till I know. <laughs> try, try running that excuse by God in the future. Uh, but if you want to believe someday you will find out in the presence of God, great. Maybe. I don't know. Um, we're not told, but it's a possibility. It's a possibility.